what was your American dream? My American dream that I was going to be a doctor and that I was going to live a lavish lifestyle. I was going to have a Range Rover. I was just going to be like the ish and married a rich white man. <laughs> when I got the first paycheck, I was like, oh, this is not the American dream. My lowest point in America when I realized that um, living on a train, for, like living in a shelter, and then wake up in the morning going on a train, my mom have to pay rent for my family members still because they don't have a work permit, they don't have an ID, they don't have a social. So it's very difficult. It get pretty bad that I watch friends actually go back home that went on a job with us. That was like, no, I have house at home that I don't even pay rent. If I know what I know now, I would have been living in place like Sweden or probably even London because it's easier to get a citizenship. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the vlog. My name is Indira Ganga and we are back with stories from the diaspora and today I have my friend and a fellow content creator Stacy here who is who will be joining us to have a conversation on a very touchy issue now if you remember last year I did a video with Cecilia from consume and during the video she spoke about the craze of people wanting to go to Europe yet they don't know what is waiting for them on the other side Stacy is um, a Belize national who has yeah. uh, relocated and lived in America yeah. and she knows the pain and beauty of relocating. So let's get straight to it. Hi darling, welcome! Hi, thank you for having me on your channel. Hi guys! For those who don't know you, like I do, introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Stacy Swift, better known as I am Stacy Swift on all platform. Um, I'm from Chicago, but a Belize nationality, born and raised. I've been to Chicago since I was like 20, 19 years old. And yeah, and I relocate from there. So let's get right into the tea. Enough yeah. of that boring introduction. <laughs> so you say you're from Belize. Yes. And you went to America at 19. Yes, I What went made you want to move to America from Belize? So we always think the grass is greener. I'll start there. Um, I moved because I used to work with a company I think, I don't know, America, if Americans watch this, you know, Safe Link, they're with Walmart. And I used to work with a visa company in Belize. And so then I got an opportunity to go work in Branson, Missouri. And I did that. And then I went to America, but my parents, my mom had lived in Chicago, but I didn't raise with my mom. So she left since I was three years old. I was living with a stepmom and stepdad. And um, he was in the army, so it was like, he was, a sergeant not in the army I'm sorry so it was kind of strict growing up and I didn't have a bad life but my real parents live in America so I always like see the American dream oh I go to America I'm gonna be rich even though we didn't live a bad life we had houses we had like cars boat like my other family live on the islands so you know but you just hear about that american dream you want to even though i was well traveled around central america but um yeah i took the job went to missouri then when i realized coming to america it wasn't the better roses mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't easy talk to us about 19 landing in america what was your first reaction 19 landing into america i land to first i landed to chicago met my parents and my brother and my sister because i didn't see them over many years and then after that i went over to branson missouri to work landing in america at 19 it was a rude awakening and what i meant by a rude awakening it was a different lifestyle than i used to from my brothers and sisters like ah this is embarrassing to say but hey we're gonna get to the truth this bit. so like i have a sister i went out with her and she had a like gangbanging boyfriend and another guy chasing the car it was all new to me there was like oh high speed chasing because this guy was talking her she have a boy like it was just dramatic chaotic just like these ghetto ass american i am sorry no disrespect to y'all but yeah and it was just dramatic and it's not something that i had used to it's a little bit scary then my brother he's not the you know straight arrow guy going to school lawyer so while we're sleeping in the living room because i didn't have my own bed i was sleeping on the couch police kicking down one door coming in looking in. like it was just a different lifestyle so within that short time of meeting my parents i was like oh wow this is the lifestyle people were living in america it's it's rough it's not something that i used to 
then I left from there, went to Bradenton, Missouri, and then my parents didn't. But life wasn't too hard because when I came, I came with a working permit. I got a uh, social security and all that when I came to America. So it wasn't bad. You know, I was working. I was making money. So the money was good because here um, in Belize, it's twice the amount of money. It wasn't that much because our money is like one. So $1 US is $2 Belize. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if you $1 US here, you know, fluctuate up and down. It was like 15 Ghana C. So it's just one to one. So Belize is quite pricey. And for people that don't know where Belize is, it's um, next to Guatemala and Mexico. Uh, it's a small country between in Central America. And you can drive to Belize from the U.S. Mm -hmm. It takes you about two weeks or a week, depends on how you drive. Mm. Um, so like I was saying, I got to America. The money was good, but it wasn't good as I expected to be. I thought I was going to make like big dollars like the American dream I'm gonna be rich I'm gonna die but no it was rude awaken that they take a lot of taxes out of your money so yeah you would be making like six hundred dollars a week and they will take about two hundred dollars in tax federal tax medicare insurance then to, and then when you take home any money it's like four hundred dollars a week mm -hmm. for me it's like eight hundred billion dollars and um like every two weeks you will get paid every two weeks instead of how we used to get paid every week you start to get paid every two weeks so that's a that's like 1600 a month so i was like oh wow this is like so when i used to see all these people wearing these fancy clothes having these nice cars doing this doing that i was like how like how mm -hmm. but they do have some successful people you know i came a long way though so you know come from homeless in america being like tired been like when I my first experience when I got to America, the food was really bad. I had McDonald's. I was really bigger, mm -hmm. like I was like probably 285, 230. I was just eating fast food, McDonald's. It's because where I live, we don't really have fast food, but we have mom and pop shop, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I was eating McDonald's. I was eating this. I was eating that. I didn't know about depression. I didn't know about all that until I landed into America, America chasing that American dream. What was your American dream? My American dream that I was going to be a doctor and that I was going to live a lavish lifestyle. I was going to have a Range Rover. I was just going to be like the ish and marry a rich white man. Uh -huh. <laughs> how did that sound shallow, but yeah. How did that balloon begin popping? At what point did you realize, oh my God, this is far from me? When I got the first paycheck. I was like, oh, this is not the American dream. And then, you know, I start dating. And then I was like, I start dating African-Americans, some quality ones. And the ones that I think that is very quality, good degrees, always like white women, the ones that I would like. And the ones that I was like, okay, let me give a chance. They'll be abusive. They just like, and because they know that you're a person from a different culture and you don't have a citizenship, um, you got to jump high, jump low, you can't go out, you can't do this. It was very hostile and nasty relationship. And then I'll sit down and I think to myself like, oh, I need to go back home. This is mm -hmm. not it. But then like, I can't go back home and be a nobody, be nothing. So I come up with a master plan. A lot of African American doesn't travel. They don't go nowhere. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start travel to different um, countries, mm -hmm. to different states. Don't come to me. Like, y'all came for Danielle videos. Like, oh, country, state, blah, blah, blah. That's editing. <laughs> yeah, so I start to get explored to different culture. You know, start to go to different places and just open up. And I was like, oh, wow, okay. I became a nanny. So, like, I don't know how a man do it when they come to America that doesn't have a green card, doesn't have a family, doesn't have nothing. I really don't know how they do it because luckily I had a working permit and that working permit gave me a driver's license, mm. an ID, and a social security. Mm -hmm. So with that, I would um, be able to find job as a nanny. I'll be able to drive Ubers. I'll be able to do a lot of things to still sustain my lifestyle, but not the luxury lifestyle, you know, the money I have now, the lifestyle I have now. How much were you making as a nanny and driving the Uber and stuff? Well, that's where the lifestyle come in now, where I start to make really good money. So with the Uber, I used to, I don't have the app, but I could send to you so you could put in here on the screen. I used to make anyway from 
1500 to 2000 dollars a week and that's because i go from 4 a.m to uh 8 45 then i go to work 9 30 to 5 p.m and the nanny is where I bring in the money where i work from nine to five um she was a neurologist for kids and she like networking play a big role when you go to um these countries networking so i was like okay i went to school to be a phlebotomist at ekng i'm a certified medical assistant I went to nursing school I took psychology so I was like okay and all this I paid from my own tuition because I, I wasn't a citizen I didn't have a green card so you have to pay these yourself so I went to a community college to get all my degrees all my certificate and um, I became a nanny because that's what my mom do for many years so it was easy for me to to her family that she worked for just like recommend so it was like a recommendation mm -hmm. and that paid well that really paid well that paid me nine nine hundred and something dollars a week a week yeah that's fair that, that paid really really well so i stick there many years while going to nursing school so that was paying my nursing school and that was paying my lifestyle of traveling and do everything and then i save i save a lot because um, and the reason I say I save a lot now is because days I didn't have money and I was living paycheck to paycheck and I was sad, I was broke, homeless before, sleep on the train before. Like yeah, Talk to people, us about that. Like how did you how did you go to zero living paycheck to paycheck and how so, did you survive? So yeah, so I was living paycheck to paycheck because the money renting I don't know but if you ever come to America or Western world, I don't care what nobody say, your family will only put up with you or people will only put up with you with a short space of while, like really a short space of time. Cause, and I understand too, like you go out there work in the cold, in the rain, in the shiver, paying these $2,000, $1,500, $3,000 rent while you're home, you don't have a green card, you don't have money, you don't have this, you don't have that. Um, plays a big role you know people treat you bad they put you out because they want you to have money to give them towards rent and and those things like that and those are the things that people don't really show at all or really even talk about like I, I came through it to be where I'm comfortable now that I put myself in a position that I make a business bank account, I make a saving account and I make a travel account mm -hmm. when I got paid when I get paid now the first thing I do my money go every time to my saving and even if i travel or travel not i have a fund that go to my travel account so whenever i travel that is the money that goes into my account that say okay i want to travel somewhere it doesn't come from my from none of my funds that i have yeah. already it comes from my travel account and then i have a saving account because if anything happened to me without a green card or without nothing that i had at that time um I learned that the hard way that I will have a little extra money to go to the hospital, to have the food, just in case if you lose your job in between job, you have a six month span money yeah. to pay that rent. And people doesn't see that way. Like, you know, like I didn't see that way either. Mm -hmm. When I was making the money, I was like buying hair, getting makeup, getting nails, doing this, doing that. Like I was just having a good time. And then when reality really kicks in and be like, and I was in between jobs while going to school. I was like, oh, wait, oh, oh, okay. I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. And that's when I start to take my nanny serious, Uber serious, uh, med school serious. I start to take all these things really serious. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then that's when I start to have the saving account. And that's when I could say like, oh, I have $20,000 in my saving account that I don't even have to touch. I like, I start to work hard like I really start to work hard and be like okay I'll never go on between jobs and don't have money sleep in shelters and then when you sleep in the shelter you have to wake up by six and you have to leave the day like you have to leave out for the day and then go back in for the night so it's not an easy road that people make it seems like America the grass is green no what if I know what I know now I would have been living in place like Sweden or probably even London because it's easier to get a citizenship um, London is one of the most diverse places I've ever been, other than New York. And um, 
places to get citizenship there. You don't even really need to be married, especially in Sweden. Mm. You could just live in with your partner and then get like citizenship. In Australia, in those places, you could just apply for jobs um, and and go go work there and stuff like that. You just gotta buy your plane ticket and make sure you have a yeah. little funds, even though it's expensive. So like the things I know now, like at this age, all the research, all the education I get, I would really do things really, really, really different. Yeah, and don't chase that American dream. Mm-hmm. Like some people are lucky, are blessed, and I would say in America, it puts me to be in wrong relationship. Like convenient relationship. Oh, I'm yes, not even embarrassed to say that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it puts you in a relationship to be like, okay, I'm just gonna live I'll have a living boyfriend so we could go half on the rent and we go half on the things. And those are things I gradually learn from now that okay, i I'm at a better stage in my life that I don't have to do that again. But those are my mark and my scar in life that be- makes me who I am now, that traveling the world, have saving in my account, exploring different places, open to different culture, and no, so- no solo traveling West Africa and making yeah. videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how hard, how hard it is for somebody who doesn't know, because we are so the American dream. And um, we are at a time where the economy is really rough and everybody is trying to get out. I belong to you if I tell you that <sighs> my husband and I are not considering our options. Yeah. If you're going blankly, how rough can it be? What are some of the stories? Who are some of the people you've seen or stories you've heard of people who went in blankly and it's just rough on them? <laughs> Me, myself. <laughs> Me, myself. Because I don't know. Like... I, or it's, how it's, rough can it get? It can get pretty bad. It can get pretty bad that... I watched friends actually go back home that went on a job with us. I was like, no, I have house at home that I don't even pay rent for. I just got to pay a little bit for light and a little bit for water and I got a better house. It, um, your mental health is really bad. I have so many surgeries. <laughs> um, I used to couldn't breathe the air and the cold. I used to vomit a lot. The food was doing me really bad again. So much weight. But then I'd be like, oh no, this is not me. I started to look in the mirror like, wow, I look so ugly. Like, I'm always downplaying myself. Like, oh, I look fat. I, like, and nobody liked me for a long space of time. I didn't date because I was like, oh, nobody likes me because I just look horrible. And and all that affects your mental health. All that affects you going to America blindly. But some people are successful, find proper relationship, get married, get their green card. Some people... Some people, you know, are lucky. Yeah. But some people go with go with a master plan that works for them and yeah. some. Yeah. I, ha- I have a question. You said it was slightly easier for you because you had a work permit. Yeah. For people who don't have a work permit, how do they survive? Or how is it for them? Okay. Um, so I could talk from experience, from my family experience that doesn't have a work permit. Um, my mom have to pay rent for my family members still because... They don't have a work permit. They don't have an ID. They don't have a social. So it's very difficult to get around. And first, it was kind of easy to get jobs, get nanny jobs, work with old people without an ID. But now, in this time of racism is high, um, crime, rapists, this, that. People want to see your identity. People want to see who you are. They want to know if you have a criminal record. They want to know who they're working with. So that's what I'm saying. Especially for men, I don't know how they do it. And that's why a lot of men get into wrong relationships. Just find women to get married, get green card, and then that's not even a value of women they like. Because some American women are very bossy. Like, they're very like, oh, do as I say. If you don't do as I say, I won't go to this green card interview. Because it happened to me. Like, talk to us about that. Yeah, like, they were like, oh, I'm not going to go to this green card interview. Do as I say. Like, jump high. You can't go out tonight. They want to fight you. It's just, it's just very hostile. Like, very, very hostile. Like, it's not even funny. They're very bossy. Like, from my experience of American, you got some that is very lovely. But from some of my experience, they're very bossy. They very just want to run your life, tell you what to do, when to go, when not to go, when they know, like, you need something from them. And then when you get what you want from them and you leave, just because of that experience they put you through, they say you're a user. But no, it's not that. You don't treat me good from the time you step into the door. So what do you expect? 
and you're not a user you just didn't live up to the standard and nobody want to be miserable and be angry and you tell them about how you help them and blah 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 no no mm -hmm. I, I have another question as we almost come to a close because you said you were working three jobs how easy or how difficult was that I'm um, working through your job is a norm in America. <laughs> yeah, we don't have like really social life. So yeah, some people go from, so I do Uber early morning. Then I used to go nanny um, in the evening. And sometimes I go back to Uber at night. And then I used to, to travel. I used to work at United Airlines to, but one day a week to, on Saturdays to get free flight. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So. so to that person who's thinking of moving to America, what advice would you give them as someone who's seen the good, the bad, and the ugly? So my advice is come with a master plan. Come with a little bit of money. Even if you're going to go with your family, you're going to go with friends, just come with a little bit of leeway money and come with a master plan and just execute it. Don't get blindsided of the party, the clothes, the fancy fashion. The clothes and everything are really cheap in America. So you like reusable fashion. Like don't get caught up in that. Go with your master plan. Like for me, um, when I became a nanny and I worked for the surgeon, I started to volunteer at the Advocate, Illinois Advocate. Then they hire you, hire me later, and then network from there network from there so it's like I would tell anybody to go network at a hospital it puts me personally in a good position mm. so even go volunteer your time at the hospital maybe you don't have a nursing degree a medical assistant phlebotomist electro uh, EKNG or any of that or nursing or you know psychology any of that you still can go and work as a secretary a cleaner um, for food service like you could still go Give time to them because you never know what door would it open for you. Mm. One thing that I will put in the promo is what was your lowest point in America? <laughs> My lowest point in America when I realized that um, living on a train, for, like living in a shelter and then wake up in the morning going on a train and then people used to see me online like, oh, you're doing good, girl, you live in America, you got nice clothes, getting nice clothes and, and living that lifestyle. And it's not even a lifestyle, you're just dressing nice and taking photos and people giving another perspective. And I'll be like, wow, okay. But yeah, of course, I'm not going to put like, oh, I'm homeless, I'm living on... No, because people is waiting for your low dunk fault to like shit on you. So I just see it as, oh, this will never happen to me again. Like, mm -mm, I'm not going to go in between jobs. I'm going to make sure I have savings. And that was my lowest point. Ever since then, I started work so hard and I crushed it till I'm in a better place in my life. Like, Amen thank God. To that. Right. Amen thank God. To that. But, like, yeah, I said, anybody that go to America, go with a master plan. Have a little bit of money. I mean, shelters are there to help you, resources are there to help you. But, like, limited resource if you don't have papers. So, at least go with a master plan. I know if you want to stay with family, you could stay there for a while, but family will get tired of you. And I do understand you get up, go to work in the snow and the cold and the rain you get angry these bills are high you don't even see your neighbors you don't even talk to your neighbors sometimes because you're just work 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 to pay this bill so yeah so just go with a master plan and yeah. and i would say if you're a techie go work for united they're really good at giving um visa okay yeah. thank you so much thank you guys comment down in the comment section if anything she said resonated with you if you have any questions put them down in the comment section i'll tag her and also attach the link to her channel and her social so you can reach to her directly and if if anyone is planning to travel or even has more questions you do consultation sessions yeah i do consultation sessions. yes so, so for a slight fee she can help you be ready for whatever next step you want to take thank yeah. you dear you're welcome nice bye guys me. Bye.